Hello and welcome again to the Doctors Who Podcast. My name is Chris. I'm Chip. I'm Brian. And today we are going to continue our discussion. Uh, we're on part six now. Yep. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss's The Name of the Wind. Now, starting last time, we decided to shift to more focused discussions, shorter episodes, things that would be easier for people to uh, basically listen to, watch, consume, whatever. Uh, so we hope this is working well for you. And we would, as always, we would love feedback. Uh, yep. So please feel free to do that. Uh, so yeah, today, discussion, part six already. Yeah. Only 77 more to go. Hmm? That sounded like it was, um... Sorry. Uh, great. I was gonna say yeah. Saluvian, but that's <laughs> definitely the wrong show. Uh, not Saru. I'm blanking on... Sealdish? <laughs> Sealdish, yeah. there, there we go. go. There we go, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh... So we're breaking this down into two major pieces. The first uh, is chapter 63 through 65, and this is the object of Kvothe's affection. And then 66 through 68 is heroics, heartbreak, and accolades. Mm -hmm. So we're going to basically... Oh, I think we're starting at 62, aren't we? There's a... Yes. Yeah. Sorry. There's a That's lot of... Yeah, yes. sorry. There's a lot of emotion running in just the title alone between the... Right segments here. Right. So, yeah. starting in on 62, as my computer begins to take off, um, <laughs> so it's the new term. <laughs> yep. Right. So, yes. And I think his the, new classes, he's right. still working in the fishery. Well, I, I think the important part is he goes back to Kilvin and he gets his oh. apprenticeship back, oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Will intervened yeah. first term and is basically like, Dude's gonna kill himself. Yeah, you gotta pull he's him. too burned out. He so, shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, so, right. Kilvin yeah. was all too happy to take him back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so he's back in the fishery, and this is the chapter, I believe, that um, they introduce a the big bone canister of substance called bone tar that's yeah. highly volatile, but yep. there's a lot of stuff that they can do with it um, as they create these different objects or they create them. Um, mm -hmm the sympathy lamps and yep. whatever else mm -hmm. yeah. that they're using the sigilry with and mm -hmm. so anyway but it's he, pretty Kil dangerous Kilvin has like a little dis like a demonstration that he does yep. to just illustrate how you don't mess with this stuff yep. basically yeah um and it has to be kept in this chilled right. canister and so mm -hmm. and as we've determined in previous episodes Rothfuss doesn't do anything that doesn't show up again nope. later he's planting so, the seeds right so <sighs> <laughs> um, he, we mentioned this a little bit last episode, but he does find new lodging after the previous inn he was staying at was bought. Yeah, after change. Ambrose bought it, uh, yeah, but he doesn't it. find that until he find that out until he talks to Anchor. Right? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a place called Anchors. Yeah. And um, so he's got a nice. He's got a room. Small room, mm -hmm. but he's got a room. Food if he's around at meal time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, like, minor, like, income potential yep. for him, but yep. he's got a place. Yep, right? he's got a place he to stay. He doesn't have to live on the street or go back to the muse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, that's good for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's playing one night, and he's he's doing very well, and Dana comes in. Yeah. And he mm. and she wants him to go for a walk. She's like, hey, you're almost done. Can we, like, go hang out? And so he tells Anchor, he's like, I know I said I would play. Mm -hmm. But I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but he does something pretty clever. Oh, I thought this was great. Yeah. yeah. Is this where he gets he, the big sing along? He one? gets yeah. up and he starts uh, Tinker Tanner. Tinker mm -hmm. Tanner, and he starts like going through the verses, and then he like points to somebody, and they make, make up a verse on yep. the spot, mm -hmm. and then points to somebody else, and then all of a sudden he's not pointing anymore. They're just he's all just jumping yep. in. So yeah, he's so able he to like sneak pack up and sneak away, and he's like, as long as the drinks, drinks keep pouring, they'll probably keep going. Yeah. So uh, that was, yeah, that was yeah. really well done. Mm -hmm. um, but they just like walk and talk for like six hours, right? Yeah. Like, so this, is flowers. this where they go? And he buys, did he, is this the strawberry wine scene? Yeah, where this is the, the, the flowers. That, okay, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, there's like 77 pages about how, what kind of flower she is. Yeah. Which is, that's right. That was another one where I'm like, oh my God, you could have shortened this by like 60% and it would have yeah. been fine. <laughs> Chris is not a botanist. 
I'm not a botanist, but I'm a fan of the Botany Bay. Yeah, I I bought something on eBay once. Oh, you're talking about a different Botany Bay. Right. My bad. I bought an eBay. eBay. (laughs) Wow. Botany Bay. Um, check off I, um, unrelated I did watch Star Trek 3 the search for Spock the other did you? Night. All right. I haven't probably seen it in 20 years nice I think that'd be another that's, podcast idea that's a it that's, would be. that's a topic for a different yeah. different episode isn't think, that the one so. Dark Brown's a Klingon? yeah that's what I thought yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. streams have been crossed this is yep. what happens this is what Egon warned them about yeah <laughs> don't cross the streams alright so um, <laughs> thanks Chip <laughs> Way to pull us, <laughs> reel us back in. Yeah. Uh, so this chapter, so after they walk and talk, I think they're, I've got a quote written down here about Quill saying, yeah, I had talked too much and said too little. So that's, I kind of feel like that, that chapter was kind of overblown a little bit. Yeah, it's just right. there was a lot of kind of fluff yeah. going on in this yeah. chapter. But um, they agreed to meet for lunch the next day. That's right. So it wasn't a loss. Right. But guess so what? So he's got a date set. But he's he going to go. He doesn't make it to lunch. <laughs> oh yeah, a little oh, shoot. What do you So know he decides to go work in the fishery, and he's going to make some emitters, wasn't it? Something. Yeah, yeah. And he was going to use the bone tar to right you know, because he these, knew he could turn around and get and some get a nice profit. Quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's he's feeling the empty pocketbook at this point. Yeah, well, and at this point, he's also elevated to the rank of a leader, right? He's been a leader, uh, but he, he's now uh, he. He is. I can't remember. So this is. So he, he graduates from his apprenticeship and so he becomes a journeyman artificer. artificer. There we go. Yeah, Thank you. But he, he yes. creates. So he the, can actually sell his things right. for some money. But the the big thing that we maybe missed on that was that uh, he created oh, the thieves lamp. The thieves lamp. Yeah, the lamp that. Oh yeah. So that's what he used yeah. to graduate. So Kelvin yeah. saw it, and Kelvin was kind of impressed at the work that was done but angry that he would make something like this that could be used for such nefarious activities and basically yes. it's, it's something that would be used for thieves or people with right. ill, Ill intent. intentions yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. but he allows yeah. Kavoth to keep it as long as it, he never sells it he doesn't allow it into any wants hands right but he also gives him the or elevates him to a German right. man status yeah so now he can sell things, and so he wants to go back and actually sell some things. Make some stuff. Make some, make some stuff. Some money. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes early in the morning, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. he does. He gets and up early because then his fella was there, he sees and fella. he never sees her there. And so. going back, fella was the girl that was in the archives with yes, Ambrose. That's right. That he was like that's forcing. Right. Yep. He was forcing himself on her when he walked yep. when Kavoth walked in. Mm-hmm. So. It's a nice yeah. another callback from Rothfuss yeah. where right. he introduced her a while back. And and I think like she was there like the first time he got in and mm-hmm. like, she showed him around. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So this is like the third time or so we've seen her. Yep. Um, but he he collects what he needs and he makes he makes the comment. He's like it's like I, there's like frost on here. Is this too cold? And yeah, it's like something wrong with one of the other people is like, oh, it's probably just because it's so early in the morning. It's fine. Yeah. So he... Or scoop- and then it was warm or something in there. Or something yeah. And it was it's, cooling So like more, he scoops so. out what he needs. He takes the proper precautions mm-hmm. and stops it up and he's doing his work. And then somebody walks by a little bit later as he's deep in thought and is like, oh my God. Which, whenever you're dealing with stuff like that, somebody says that, it pulls you yep. out whatever you're doing. Yep. And like his container is about ready to just... It's been leaking and it's like mm-hmm. chewing away at the table leg and the table collapses. The table collapses. Oh, everything yeah. spills and all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Everything. Well, in one and one property. As soon as this hits the air, it's gonna it burns. It flame. Burns. You know, yeah. Flame on. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, Good fantastic four also. reference. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's a dangerous chemical. This bone. This uh, bone tar. Bone tar. So yep, it'll it'll eat through anything, and it will, yeah, burn once it's in contact with the air. And then the fog that it creates, or like the the fumes, the smoke that it creates, yeah, is also enough it's to like ammonia. Yeah, it's right? like ammonia. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. gonna kill your inside. Highly yeah. combustible, yeah. and yeah, just deadly. But basically, this pins in, fella. Yeah. Um, yeah. And right. it also they, he also kind of sets up the the layout of the fishery or this room that they're in that they've got these giant five hundred gallon tanks of water that are suspended that Kilvin did some 
sigildry and sympathy with them to have these I forget, they're like drowning tanks. I can't remember what they were drenching drenching tanks. Drenching tanks, tanks I think yeah. You know, basically to if something does happen that you know they'll unleash all this water mm-hmm. that you can just kind of wash things away. And then there's um kind of contouring on the floor and they've mm-hmm. kind of got drains set up at different and, and points in there so everything should funnel to sure. different drains. Yeah. But yes, no. Like I kind of picture this as I don't know if you guys have been like a chem lab, but one of those mm-hmm. like those showers, the chemical that's just shower outside. Yeah, yeah, the chemical showers. Yeah. So I kind of see that yeah. with the yeah, kind of drain situated. It just falls all yeah. down into the. Yep. Anyway, right. great setup, um, and it really gives you a good feel for the space. But, but yeah. it's not really a setup that works well with bone tar. No. Not particularly. No. But um, so fellow's kind of off working on in her own space and I don't think she's paying attention to what's kind of right. happened yet right. around her and excuse me and so the, the bone tar is yep it's already eating through everything it's already <laughs> starting to produce a, a fire like as it's going towards the drain things are melting yep. the, the mm-hmm. fumes are just getting crazy uh, and everyone starts evacuating well yeah. Fella is completely trapped by this she yeah. has no way to escape um we, the readers, know that, yeah, she's pretty much a goner at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. She's kind of on an island to herself at this point. Yeah. But Kavoth realizes there is something he can do. He wants to look around and see what's around him, uh, see what he can do, and he really doesn't find a whole lot. He finds some unfinished lamps, some some of the hardened glass that yeah. mm-hmm. um, that Kilvin had laying around, the wire, but that was about it. So he ends up, he ends up breaking the glass cutting himself and binding himself to what was he what would he bind himself to wasn't it the glass the drenching drenching tank yeah Yeah. the drenching tank itself so he shattered the drenching tank so it would release all this water Mm -hmm. that he and he had his cloak and his you know he basically allowed it to get him just completely wet Mm -hmm. so that he could try to survive the fire as he ran in to save fella he does. Mm-hmm. He gets her out, uh, but he's also uh, he takes a few breaths of this ammonia smoke. And After he grabs her and there's kind of his consciousness, out. Mm-hmm. yeah, wakes up Apparently, in the medica. Yep. Uh, and what, what's what's the medic's name that stitched him up? Mola. 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 Mola yeah. Mola. Yeah. Mola. Yeah. Mola. Like yeah. And she's she's there and she. She tells him that, yes, fella's okay. Yes, you'll be fine, <laughs> basically. And um, um, he is well enough to go. Mm-hmm. His cloak is basically ruined. Because mm-hmm. he goes back to the fishery at that point. Uh, no, first he goes back to the Aeolian because he's supposed oh, to have lunch right. with Denna, right? You're right, you're yeah. right. Um, so his, his shoes are gone. Yep. He's down a shirt. <laughs> yeah. So now he's yeah. Now he just says the one. Just the one. And uh, his cloak's basically ruined. So he, he he's he's heading into Imray barefoot. That's right. Because he's about an hour hour and a half late. Yep. At this point to meet Denna for lunch, and that's the singular thing that's on his mind. Yeah. Like, I miss lunch. And he gets there. He meets both. This lady is trouble. Yeah. Everybody's telling you that. You don't listen. But, but so he meets Doge at the door and, and love, would you listen? Right. No. Yeah. No. No, I wouldn't. But I don't think I was even into girls then. So not at fifteen. Maybe I've started to really pay some attention, but not much. <laughs> anyway. He goes back, he, he he talks to Doge. Doge says that yeah, she did. She waited here. I've never seen her wait this long for anyone else. But he but, but she did she leave with somebody. Met <laughs> someone and, and did leave. Yeah. You know, a little while ago. Yeah. Um, so he goes back a couple of days later, and, uh, in the, in the book, in the audio book, they pronounce it Dioc. Oh, Dioc. Okay. No idea if, um, I mean, sure. I, I would assume that that's probably correct, since sure. they're, the audio books are probably done probably, with so. Dioc. Okay. Blessing, but yeah, we'll go with that. That sounds I mean, better it, than I'm good with that. Yeah. It's, it's when I was starting to like listen to the Wheel of Time stuff, and I'm like, yeah. so that's how you say that's this word. That's not how you say it. That's not how I've been saying it. Hermione, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I knew that all along. But yeah, so after you know, he spent some time there. Um, just he's in 
still in a lot of pain and mm-hmm. so but he makes his way back to the university and goes and and um heads back to the fishery just right. to kind of observe the damage and he wants to talk to kilvin and kilvin's there yeah. and so he does talk to kilvin yeah. But that was a great exchange. I like the it fact really that was. Kilvin still had a sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kilvin was yeah. like, "What stories did you hear about me?" Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. was like, "Well, I heard that you called the name of fire and stopped it in its tracks." Yeah, that is great story. Yeah, <laughs> but not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, he's he he pretends to initially be displeased, and then he's like, "No, seriously." In my culture, there's a saying that every seven years expect disaster. I'm two years overdue. You saved fella's life. <laughs> yeah. It could have been worse. Yeah, because he... So... Because doesn't he, yeah. like, give him back his stuff and uh, yeah. the, like, the, the lamp yeah, the falls out was, and he's like, yeah. I told you to keep, keep yeah. an eye on this lamp and... <laughs> Even if you pass <laughs> out, keep an eye on yeah. it. Yeah. Was like, was, and then he's like, ah, I'm just kidding. Just joking. That was a good... Yeah. good I, I bought that first part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... But that's where. But it, um. But it doesn't. Doesn't he finish making his emitters then? Yeah, he did. He does. Bear, he does. He, he just and goes and, yeah. and he finishes, and he makes the comment about how it's hard for him because he's got like a bandaged finger yep. or something, yeah. and it's a little difficult. Um. But I did like the fact that he was. Or he was talking with Kilvin, and Kilvin was out of commission. Like his his, his hands, hands were bandaged, bandaged like yep. to the elbow. And, like he couldn't yeah. even stroke his beard. Yeah. Like that's how damaged I mean, they were. That would kill me if I couldn't stroke <laughs> this thing. That's what she said. Oh. But, you know, uh, Kvothe was like, just promote me to Raylar and then I can assist yeah, yeah. you all you want. Yeah. yeah. So it was a good humored interaction. Yeah, and actually, was. Kilvin is one of my favorite characters. He is just so human. Yes. <laughs> just has a yes. great sense of humor. But um, yeah. at this point, you know, uh, Kvothe goes and takes the lamps and he ends up selling. Or they were sold. I think they come back later and say that he ended up making like a... A talent One and talent three jots, three jots yeah. or something like that. Yeah, which I still haven't figured out the monetary conversion no. on that. I know the right. talent's worth a lot. And I don't yeah. know what a jot's worth. X amount of jots fit into a talent. Yeah, yeah. and then there's yeah, there's the half pennies and yeah, yeah. There's some other ones in there too. But... Talent to jot <laughs> conversion. Conversion. Keep so, talking, and I'll see what I can find out. So everything seems like it's good at the fishery. Obviously, things are going to be a little bit different going forward, and he still... Um, so he ends up taking those talent and three jots and spending nearly all of it on some low work boots. Yep, because yeah. he lost yeah. his only pair of shoes, the ones that he actually got in Tarbine. When yep. And so the shoemaker basically gifted them to him because he couldn't afford a new pair. But, but he still only has one shirt. He has no cloak. Mm-hmm. He's just like really kind of down and out about how broke he's he is. He's just really, yeah, really kind of upset, down on himself, and just not in a good place. So why not make a trip out to the Aeolian? Well, it's a place that he's comfortable, and he has actually some friends there. So, so he makes his way out there, and um, who does he see while he's there? Well, he goes to the door, and Deok says, somebody's here Somebody's waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> and so thinking it's Denna, you know, he, he's excited. He, always... he walks in and it's not Denna. No. No, it's not. It's um, Bella. Yeah, it's Bella. Um, which you kind of expected, right? I mean, he, yeah. Saved, yeah. he saved her life. She came out just fine. And he's kind of disappointed, but he kind of uses his, his acting skills to he, he put is, on a good but, face. But he's, these... Rothfuss also makes the point to let us know that both notices that she is good looking. Oh yeah, so. sure, sure. That is helpful here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but she has a present for him. Is it a pony? <laughs> it is not a pony. Although maybe in the story it could have been a pony. Could have. <laughs> but it ends up being an emerald green or a green cloak. Yep. It's very difficult to wear a pony as a cloak. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That would be tough. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it's like something nicer than he ever thought he would. Own. Yeah, it's Just something like, that she went out and had this made for her. Right, it looked and like. she, so they, she worked she with had a the tailor. tailor and they had like a couple of these pockets, pockets and yeah. yeah. And, 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 and she even like roped Will and Sim into this. Like, yep. got their mm-hmm. opinions on what yeah, he like. Right. What, what what does he need basically? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so it was like a really thoughtful gift. And he mm-hmm. at this point notices that wasn't was Denna actually there? Not like, yet. So um, so they kind of have this exchange. She gifts him this cloak and um is that when he looks at her hands or he's trying yes. to pay her a compliment yes because she's thanking him for saving yeah and he, but he's talking about 
or she was saying how, you know, she froze and that she would have died and he was trying to tell her, no, you would have done something to save yourself. And mm -hmm. he knows. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, go ahead. So a talent is a unit of currency in the Cialdish currency system used commonly throughout the four corners. A talent is worth one-tenth of a gold mark and okay. ten times a copper jot. I wondered if it was ten jots to a talent, but there you go. that would make sense. Yeah. They're, so they're essentially on the metric system. Sounds like it. Yeah. Just like Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Curse you, Canadian. <laughs> hey. Curse you, Canadians. Yeah. Maybe Trudeau is actually Kvothe. Trudeau the Bloodless. Oh. Maybe. Wait, is he the is he Prime Minister? Yeah. Is he the Prime Minister of Canada? Mm -hmm. Oh. Does he have red hair? He could dye it. That's true. Boy, you might be onto something. I might be. Then again, I might not be. No. Anyway. Anyway, so she's she gives him this quote, the, the cloak, and mm -hmm. she, he's she's saying, you know, that she froze, that she was going to die, and he's trying to boost her spirits and say, no, you would have right. done something, right. and, yeah. and, you know, it's kind of this, another awkward exchange, kind of back and forth, yeah. and, and he does notice her hands, and they're not delicate hands, that they're hands of somebody who's worked with them and builds yep. things, and they're calloused, and mm -hmm. so I... I don't remember the significance of that, other than he notices it. Right. It's, it's like these aren't the hands of somebody that would just lay down and die. That's right. These are the mm -hmm. hands of somebody that would do something. Basically. So anyway, yeah. so the the next thing I picture, Kvothe is actually facing like the door, and Fell is in front of him, and she's kind of like she puts the cloak, put the cloak over around him, and, and she's like adjusting it. Yep. And who does who walks in? Yep. Yeah. Mm. And he so, and knew as soon as like the two of them were in the Aeolian that she was going to show up yep. at some point. And so yeah. you know, from her perspective, it looks like fellas hugging him or embracing mm -hmm. him, or they're having a moment together. And, uh, yeah, you know, a total sitcom type set. Right, but it know. really is. Yeah. Um, the last thing I think I read was uh, the stuff with Ari. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's when he. Yeah, he races back to because, like, he realizes that all the t the bone tar was flushed down into the flushed down sewer into system. the sewer system, and that's where she lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he goes and uh, he go to the medica. He goes to the medica and finds Mola mm -hmm. and convinces her to come along. Yeah, and help. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. she's like, "Why? Why are we going mm -hmm. on this roof? What What's going on?" And he's like, "I have no to trust yeah. me." And yeah, uh, she's very skeptical right at this point and he tries to get into the grate he can't figure out how ari has it rigged but she's okay yeah because she's not even in the gate because she's, she's somewhere yeah. yeah hiding somewhere else and she approaches right. him when he's trying to get down to the yeah. gate to get to but, her home but i mean very very little happens as far as the conversation the important thing is she's fine but she said that she and smelled she, that she yeah. knew something right. was different and that mm -hmm. the animals all started to run and mm -hmm. scamper away. And But I think the, the important key to take away here is now that Mola knows about her. Mm -hmm. Yep. But Quoth has her swear not to do intervene and do anything yeah. or tell anyone about her. Right. That, you know, she can help, but not, can't right. take the word anywhere else. Mm -hmm. right. So, Yeah. Cool. Um, that's kind of what we got, I think. That's right? kind of a good place to end, really. Because you know, I think kind of what happens next, they, yeah. some other storylines start up. So, right. so cool. we'll be back next week with additional Name of the Wind discussions. All right. In the meantime, please leave some comments below. Uh, please visit us.